So I want you right now to give a warm Auckland, New Zealand welcome for my good friend and the world's greatest sales trainer, Mr. Jordan Belfort. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things the Wolf of Wall Street got factually right. Look at this. The Wolf of Wall Street, they call me. Look. For this list, we'll be looking at the true tales in Martin Scorsese's 2013 Oscar nominated hits. Do any of these shock you? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Jordan's first day as a stockbroker was Black Monday. After getting a job at L.F. Rothschild, Jordan's first day as a licensed stockbroker was, in fact, on Black Monday. By 4 p.m., the market had dropped 508 points, the biggest plummet since the crash of 29. This major stock market crash on October 19, 1987, impacted markets around the globe and saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average fall about 22%. It was the biggest single-day drop in its history and reignited fears of another Great Depression. Due to the financial hardships that followed, Jordan was subsequently laid off from his firm. Wall Street had swallowed me up and me right back out again. It might seem like a small detail in Belfort's timeline, but Stratton Oakmont might never have existed had this inciting incident not occurred. Number 9. Stratton Oakmont regularly had wild parties. Along with the excess number of drugs many of the employees did, Stratton Oakmont did have wild parties on a regular basis. <laughs> While Belfort claims that some incidents only occurred after he left the firm, many of the vulgar scenes depicted are accurate. Employees did bring in sex workers, Stratton's co-founder did eat an employee's goldfish, more on that later, and one woman was paid to shave her head. Belfort even claimed that the drug use and crude culture at the firm was heavily toned down for the film compared to what occurred in real life. Number 8. Jordan almost crashed his helicopter while high. It's a miracle that Jordan Belfort even survived these wild years. Within the movie's first few minutes, we see him passing out while piloting his helicopter. This happened in 1993, when Jordan was flying to his estate in Long Island. In real life, he almost dove the helicopter straight into Little Neck Bay. Despite this, he insisted on landing himself so his co-pilot suggested that he close his left eye to help with double vision, which is what we see Leonardo DiCaprio doing in the film. They hit the ground and shot back up into the air before thudding down again. Incidentally, the real Jordan's co-pilot was apparently also the captain of his yacht, and as we're about to see, boy did he earn his danger pay. Next time, brother. Till next time. Number 7. Jordan's Yacht Sunk in a Storm In the film, Jordan decides to travel on his yacht from Italy to Monaco in order to make his way up to Switzerland. I just had to get there by tomorrow. We'll lose $20 million. We're going to Monaco! However, there's stormy weather ahead. While the circumstances were different in real life, the most important parts of the story really happened. I will not die sober! As in the film, Jordan was extremely high. However, he was actually traveling with seven guests, including his wife, and they were on their way to Sardinia. I love you. I love you. Just hold on tight. It was the drugs that made him adamant about braving the storm. The helicopter did end up in the water, but it didn't fall off. They had to push it off the deck so that another helicopter could drop down their rescuer. Number 6. Donnie slash Danny Swallowed a Goldfish Watching The Wolf of Wall Street, viewers could have been forgiven for thinking that some of the craziest scenes were added or at least embellished for the screen. But sometimes fact is just as strange as fiction. Case in point, the infamous goldfish scene, which really happened. And today you needed to clean the fishbowl today? I had finished my paperwork and I was so just had a couple minutes. Okay. Nice to meet you. Danny Parush, whom Donny Azoff is based on, was incensed that an employee was cleaning his fishbowl, and the fact he was wearing a bow tie also somehow added fuel to the fire. And so to punish and humiliate him, Danny reached into the bowl, plucked out the man's pet, and ate it. Number 5. Jordan crashed his car while high on quaaludes. Wow. Maybe I hadn't made it home okay. In perhaps one of the most outlandish scenes in the film, Jordan realizes his house has been bugged after taking expired quaaludes. As he rushes home to warn his friend, he absolutely demolishes his vehicle. 
Jordan has said publicly that this scene and the events leading up to it were accurate. It's hard to believe that this major plot point isn't something Scorsese conjured up for entertainment purposes. But sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. It was a miracle I wasn't killed. Well, you know that I didn't kill anybody else. Number four, Jordan attempted to save his friend from incrimination. Ever get back to you about that, um, about that, uh, that account? You know, you remember it was like four or five mil, something like that, right? After Jordan is arrested, the FBI get him to wear a wire in order to incriminate one of his good friends, Donnie Azoff. Jordan passes Donnie a note to warn him, but the FBI finds out about it, landing Jordan in more hot water. You're going to jail. As previously mentioned, Donnie is based on a real person, Danny Parush. However, the person that Jordan Belfort actually passed the note to was another close friend, Dave Beal. To this day, Belfort doesn't know for sure how the FBI found out about the note. Number three, Jordan scammed investors out of millions. He stocks that these companies, they're, they're like crappy companies. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I told you what I'm doing is completely legal. Stratton Oakmont used pump and dump schemes and stock market manipulation to scam millions from investors. But we were making more money than we knew what to do with. This is how Jordan and his firm were able to accumulate so much wealth during their reign on Wall Street. After artificially inflating a stock, Jordan and his friends would then sell their shares at a high price, after which the stock would tank to its true value. It's not going to make you rich, and it's not going to make you poor. But what this trade will do is serve as a benchmark for future business, Kevin. Do you feel comfortable with me now, Scott? And then you'll know for sure that you finally found a broker on Wall Street that you can trust. This left investors stuck with worthless assets that they were then forced to sell at a major loss. According to Jordan, their firm didn't start off attempting to intentionally hurt anyone. However, once fame and money got to their heads, their morals slowly went out the window. All you have to do today is pick up that phone and speak the words that I have taught you. Number two, unrelated charges against a Swiss banker led to Jordan's arrest. Good to see you again, Jordan. You're under arrest. When Jordan laundered his money into Switzerland, a Swiss banker aided him after being introduced through a Stratton employee. Jordan, Jean-Jacques Sorel. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Nice to meet you. The banker was then arrested on unrelated charges while visiting the U.S. You're gonna beat me? Yeah, yeah I know your country, you're gonna beat me. Yeah. Although neither Jordan nor the FBI have publicly given away details, it got Jordan placed in handcuffs. Belfort later pled guilty to securities fraud and money laundering and was sentenced to four years in prison. I'm not ashamed to admit it. When we arrived to prison, I was absolutely terrified. As part of his sentencing agreement, he also was ordered to pay $110 million in restitution to his victims. As of 2018, however, only a fraction of that has been paid. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, after prison, Jordan became a sales trainer and entrepreneur. Sell me this pen. After serving just 22 months of a four-year prison sentence, Belfort decided to turn his life around and direct his talents in a new direction. He became a successful sales trainer as well as an author. The release of Martin Scorsese's film gave him even more fame, allowing him to pursue a wider range of entrepreneurial endeavors. He hosts a popular podcast where he's discussed much of his life in detail. As shown at the end of the movie, he's also become a popular motivational speaker, running seminars teaching his straight-line system. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.